Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and welcome to your fifth Pug tutorial. So in this one, I want to talk about how to work with CSS within your Pug HTML files. This includes external CSS, internal CSS, and also inline CSS. All right, so let's get started. Just keep in mind that I have the Pug Watcher running, which means that when I save an index Pug file, it gets outputted inside index.html inside the HTML directory. All right, so the index pug file. Let's start by declaring a document type. So we'll say, all right, doc type HTML. Saving this gives us that in the output. All right, let's begin with some HTML tags. HTML, head, and also body. Now, um, to include an internal, sorry, an external CSS file, it's the same as doing it with regular HTML, except you're actually going to be adding the element using Pug. So let's first create a CSS file inside the HTML directory. So we'll say, okay, new file, call this one style.css. Let's give the body a background color of black. Um, let's give it a font size of uh, 36 pixels and a font color of white. All right. So now we're going to include this CSS file inside this index HTML file. Okay, so inside your head tag, you want to make a new link element and give it a few attributes. The first one being rel equal to style sheet. Okay make a second one called href equal to style.css. Saving this one generates in HTML a normal link element with two attributes rel and href. Now inside the um, HTML directory we've got style.css and also index.html so this is relative to the actual directory right there. So now this HTML file if I was to add some text inside the body just say one paragraph saying this is um, an HTML file. Saving this one gives us that result right there. In the browser, we get, boom, that right there. So everything works as expected. Okay, so that is how you can use external CSS with Pug. Now, internal CSS is essentially the same thing as normal HTML internal CSS, but uh, using the Pug syntax to create a multi-line element. So back inside the head tag, we can create a new style element. So we'll say, all right, style, okay. Then put a dot to say this is gonna be a multi-line HTML element. Putting an enter, then a tab, we can now start declaring our CSS rules. So let's add some more rules for a paragraph tag. So we'll say, okay, P, and make the text color as being red and give it a text uh, decoration underline. All right, so now saving this one gives us this result in HTML style and then that P um, style block right there. In the browser, we obviously get boom, that effect. Okay, now for internal, uh, sorry, inline CSS, we can do once again a very similar thing by going inside the index pug file and putting an attribute on the actual paragraph tag. This will be the style attribute. Now we can do this one of two ways. We can first do it the, I guess, normal way by putting a uh, double quote and putting the actual styles inside here. For example, let's just say that um, we'll give the text align center and we'll also give it um, uppercase transformation. So text transform and then uppercase. All right, saving this gives us this in the HTML. Inside the actual browser, we obviously get, boom, those effects right there. Now we can also do it a separate way. Now we can do this um, also using a JavaScript object. So let's define a new JavaScript object within Pug by putting a dash and then writing the JavaScript on this line. Let's make a new constant and call this one p styles. Okay, that's going to be equal to an object literal. Now inside here, we're going to um, 
give the CSS properties um, using key value pair. So let's just say, um, let's define a new property called text align. Okay, uh, with the value of center and do the same thing for text transform uppercase. All right, perfect. So now we have this JavaScript object. We can actually insert this into this style attribute by getting rid of all of this stuff, including the double quotes and simply just saying P styles. Now Pug is going to read this object and then convert that into normal CSS. So saving this one gives us that in the HTML. We can see we get um, the formatted CSS there. Actually, might be a problem here. Give me one sec. Okay, what does it say? Unexpected token. Ah, okay, so got to give a double quote there and fix that up. Alrighty. Now, that is a valid object. We can save this and now in the HTML we get that formatted CSS the way it should be. Okay, now saving this in the browser we get the same effect. Okay, and that is how you can use CSS with your pug HTML files. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.